Hey guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend on YouTube who talks about astronomy. Oh, by the way, like, comment, and subscribe. If you know anybody that uh, likes astronomy, science, telescopes, send them my link, send them my way. Um, if there's anybody or any of you guys are on the forums, there's three, four big forums out there. If they ask questions that they need help, and I have some of those videos, please share my link on those, um, you know, cloudy nights or Facebook um, astro channels or anything like that. I'm sure, you know, I got videos that are like the best finder scopes to the worst finder scopes, the best eyepieces to the worst eyepieces, uh, radian uh, teleview eyepieces or uh, comparing this scope to that scope. So I would appreciate it if, um, you know, if you guys know anybody um, and for you guys who have not subscribed, please hit that red button. It doesn't cost you anything. If you like my content, you like my humor sometimes, subscribe. And again, if you guys are on the forums and someone's asking a question and I have a video, please post it. Um, you know, I would appreciate it greatly. Okay, today's video is I wanted to show you guys why I think the Rye Gel or the Telrad. I've done a video called the best finders to the uh, the worst finder scopes. And of course I say the uh, this is a Rigel. It has like a bullseye. Uh, very similar to the Telrad which has a three ring bullseye. This one has a two ring bullseye. But I was just about to get it today and I am almost positive now I sold my Telrad and I have I think three or four of these. Just in case sometimes I have one in my bag one in my case, one on a scope or two, because uh, a couple times I thought I had it and I forgot it. And finding stuff in the sky is almost impossible. Well, okay, not impossible. If you know what to do, you just don't know 100% where you're pointing your telescope. Even with a traditional 9x50 finder, actually this one's 8x50 finder scope. But I wanted to show you guys why this or the Telrad is just way better than any other finder scope. I just want to talk about these reflex uh, finder scopes and how easy it is to find stuff in the sky, how to star hop with these. And I almost 100% never even use these. All I use is, okay, now that I got rid of my Telrad, I just use, let's say, this guy or before my Telrad. You point it and then I would put like a 56 millimeter uh, Mead 4000 2 inch eyepiece in it and that can give you some really low uh, wide field views. Then I would just scan in that eyepiece and then if I saw a blurry thing, so it would be like a super big finder scope is what I used to do. I didn't even use finder scopes at all. I just used this guy, put it where I think it should be. Once you learn how to use these guys and you, you know, point it, Again, I would just put my 56 millimeter two eyepiece, scan in the uh, telescope a little, and I almost always found, found it, 98% of the time. Just a little scanning and boom. Um, so that's it. So I wanted to show you guys why this is so good. And I'm gonna compare it like to a traditional finder scope. Now some people use both. When you're, find, when you're trying to find the faint fuzzies, that's like nebulas and galaxies and globular clusters, that type of thing. Some people will use a Telrad or Rigel and then use an eight by 50, nine by 50. Then you look here, if you see a little fuzzy thing, then you look in the eyepiece. But me, 99% of the time, 99.9, .9, I don't even, I skip this part just Put the bullseye, look in a low power eyepiece, it's there. I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay guys, so here's how I'm gonna try to do this test where you guys are gonna understand. Because if I go outside and I try to show you a constellation on the camera, it's not gonna show up. And then you'll, you might see the bullseye, but you're not gonna. So I'm going to do this kind of test. Now let's say for instance, you have, um, you have a star here, star here. Uh, let's, we're gonna do a square, okay? So let's say you're looking for somewhere dim. Hopefully you guys can, I'll bring you guys closer. Okay, so there's four stars here, right? 
Now let's say you need to find an object that's directly in this center. Okay, now I'm using the Mead 10 inch Schmidt Newtonian. Uh, not that you need to use this, and I know guys, some of you are gonna say EQ5 is too small for this. This is just for demo purposes. The reason why I'm picking this guy, because I have the, the shoe here that fits this eight by 50, and I have the Telrad side by side. I'm gonna try to go behind here and show you that screen where the four dots are. And again, we wanna go right in the middle. And what would be the difference uh, in the view and why the Telrad and Rigel is just so much better and you know 100% where you're looking at. So that's why I'll show you guys. So sometimes new people or people in general might not understand why they're so good. I just made the stars bigger so you guys can see it okay okay so i'm gonna just turn this over there i was able to mount it with my cell phone camera adapter uh to the regular 8x50 finder scope and i found a way so now whenever i move as you can see you can see it so that's the bullseye it's on the highest it could go uh you can see the four dots so listen if i have to go in the middle i just go like Boom, uh, okay, uh, I'm on an EQ mount, so the angles are a little bit weird. But let's say, boom, right there, right? I'm right in the middle. Okay, and then I just put my eyepiece, and then there you go. I uh, start, you can, with the eyepiece, you could just move it a little bit around, and then boom, you got your object. So if I wanna go on this star, the corner, boom, I'm already on it. I know I'm 100% on that star. This star, Boom. If I want to go on that star, or let's say, for instance, there's an object that's kind of right here in the middle, okay? So let's say you can triangulate, there's a galaxy right there in the middle, but there's no star. Let me show you what I would do. So you guys saw where I put that? I would just go like, do, 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 and about triangle, boom, right there. Put the eyepiece in, the two, uh, two inch, 56 millimeter eyepiece, maybe, uh, maybe right there, and then just start wiggling it a little bit and look for the object. Let me show you how it is with the regular finder scope, the 8x50, 9x50. Okay, guys, so I was able to clamp it to my finder scope, and there's one star. However, I don't even know. Okay, so that's the right star now if i go here it's the left star there's the other one and the fight oh, on the eq mount is just with these weird angles there so if i want to go in the center which would be somewhere okay it's like i'm kind of guessing does that make sense kind of okay it might be roughly there but i won't know until okay there's the other two so maybe there but if it was further apart i wouldn't be able to i'm just guessing now remember on the other side where I pretended if there was a galaxy, it's like, okay, maybe it would be there if it's aligned. Uh, it's just you never know 100%. Yeah. Okay, also, most people who know, let's say, I am trying to do the Big Dipper. Looks something like that, right? Dude, like that. There's two galaxies, M81 and 82, that's roughly about this area. So how you find it is you, from this star to that star, opposite sides of the bold star. So with these two stars, you draw an imaginary line from here to there, and it's about double the distance. So again, with a finder scope, you're blowing it up because it's closer, so you don't know exactly where are you like a double. If there's two stars and you need to go right in the middle, since, you can, you, since you're looking at the sky with your eyes, and then you're just imposing this in the middle where you want. And as soon as you see that bullseye is in the middle, you're going to be there. And again, if you have a regular 8x50, 9x50 finder, uh, you could look at that. And then if you see a little fuzzy thing, uh, there you go. Um, or you could do what I was doing, which was um, just put a big low power 2 inch eyepiece and then just like scan a little bit and then you should be you should find it but that's kind of uh 
how you use these guys. This guy, a right gel or a tell rad, um, and it's just so easy to find. So as long as you have, and sometimes there is no bright stars. You might just have, there might be kind of, far, you might have two stars here, and it might make an imaginary triangle or a square, but looking at the sky with this guy, you can kind of know where to put it once you get to uh, work it a little bit. Because remember too, your maps and charts, or even if you're using a cell phone app, is gonna be, of course, 10 times smaller than what it's gonna be in the sky, right? So you gotta take into consideration. If there's two stars that are, you know, two inches from uh, each other on the map, really on the sky, that might be like equivalent to, you know, 20 degrees or something like that. Does that make sense? Because, of course, it can't be the size of the real sky, or otherwise your map is gonna be 10 foot long. So take that into consideration. Whatever's on your map, chart, uh, planisphere, cell phone, in the sky, it's gonna be double or triple. So if it's two inches over here, your imaginary triangle, square, star, whatever you're, you're hopping to, it's gonna be probably, let's say, three times further that distance there. But once you master the size difference between your map and the sky, it will all fit in. You could just bullseye this guy, put your low power eyepiece. That's it, guys. I hope you liked this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Again, if uh, you know anybody that's in the Astro stuff, um, send them links. Uh, links. Uh, tell them, hey, check out this guy. He has a lot of good information. Or if you're on the forums, uh, you want to help me out, and somebody asked for a video that I have, uh, you know, throw it. I, I see other uh, people who, um, you know, promote other YouTubers. Why not me? Why not you? Cheers. Joe Jaguar out.